Okay, I'm going to show you how you can um, burn these edges so that your things won't come out. It's totally up to you. Usually I grab the tail, pull it down, and people do it differently. And of course, having a husband who's a firefighter doesn't help when I, he knows I'm using fire in the house. So I just get it like that. There's that little edge. Can you see it right there? I'm going to point it out. I just kind of tap it there. And it starts bur It starts melting. See that? How it kind of melts. Let me get closer so you can see that it's melted. And then I just get the, the something like a, my little uh, pin here. I'm going to cut that little tip off. Right there. Start to see because of the um, color, but I just kind of get it a little bit hot right there. It's melting there. Then I get the pin or metal. Don't use your finger because it'll burn you. And then I just kind of squish it down, and it will melt to each other like it's like a um, glue, just like that. Okay. Don't touch it with your hand because you don't want to your fingers you don't want to get burned so that is just kind of melts together and if you don't want to do it with that then you can try to use like the fray check I haven't used the fray check on the nylon cording I haven't used the fray check on the nylon cording but I'm assuming it would be about the same um, but I haven't tried that usually I just burn it um, and then get something a metal or a pencil or something and I kind of squish it to its side so now it's already kind of kind of cooled down I don't know if you could see it but it's kind of glued to itself okay so that bottom piece attached to the front and the back okay and so now we're gonna attach the bottom the sides here not the bottom the sides here in the same way now I want to put the wrong sides together and here I'm going to attach once again in that second string that second space just like here and I'm going to end there in that second space. So when I attach it, it's going to look like this, okay? And then well, when I get here to the second space, then I'm going to go ahead and move up and continue attaching them until I get here to my last stitch, okay? So then that three sides are going to be together, and then I can get ready and then attach the last um, sides here. So here, I'm going to go ahead and start on that second space, one, two, and then here, one, two, right there. It's going to be right in that corner. Let me see if I can get closer so you can see that. And I'm going to attach across here. I'm going to stop there, go up the sides, and then I'll come back, turn my work. I mean, not turn it, but just get here and then attach this side. So here, I'm going to get my string. And then I can begin to attach it. Remember, all these cords will have to be... Uh, sewn in or tied in later here. So I go there. I can put this through the inside just to get it out of my way. Go to my next stitch here. Grab it. Go through both of those. Go to the next stitch. Remember we're attaching both layers. So there'll be one, two, three, four loops on there. Go to the next one. Gonna continue all the way across. I hope I'm not boring you because I know some of you don't like to watch it step by step. Go to the next stitch till we get to the edge here. Sometimes I do it so tight that it's hard to get it there. So there's my second stitch there. Okay. Now I'm going to open this. Let me move back so you can see how I'm opening here. My stitch is there. I'm going to open this side here. So now I'm going to turn it this way. See that? So if you look at it, it's like this. And now you're going to go around. Once I do the corner here, let me get closer so I can show you. When I get to the corner, I like to do one little single crochet stitch there. I'm going to go into the next stitch. And then this time though, I'm going into that front piece here. Here, I'm going to do another single crochet just because the um, corners tend to have a lot of weight on them, okay? And so now, make sure that they match up just like that. 
we're going to slip stitch all the way up. And then when I finish this side, I'm going to go ahead and when I go all the way up here, I'll fasten off right there. And then let's pretend I finished that. Let me pull out that yarn so it does, doesn't come out. So then when I finish here, on that second stitch, because I don't want to go all the way to the top, I want to go one, two, attach it there to this one, two, one, two. And then I'll just go ahead and get my purse, move it this way, line everything up. Make sure all the stitches line up one, two, three, exactly. And then I'll attach here on the second chain, one, two, to one of the matching stitches. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to end in this corner. Once I end there, I'm going to do a couple of single crochets, one single crochet there and here in the corner to attach it. I'll fasten off and then those strings will get pulled into the middle and sewn in. And then once I have all my strings there, I'll sew those into my purse and then I'll attach the other side exactly the same way. So go ahead, sew up to the second stitch, fasten off, then come here, attach, sew up, fasten off, and then do the other side. Okay, you could see I finished sewing, I mean uh, slip stitching there. So now I need to do this edge. You could either do it from outside in. I find it easier if I turn my work this way and then I could start working here. So then that's the next stitch here that was done. So here's my second stitch and then I find the other stitch there. Oops, let me grab my yarn, my thread. I could pull it out here. In the corners, I'm going to take this cord and stick it inside, but in the corners I like to do the single crochet just because it seems like that's where you get more pressure in your bags. At least I do. I don't know why. I think that's where it gets all stuck in there. And so then once I just do my single crochet, I can go ahead and continue. Let me grab this here. It's always awkward when I'm trying to hold the, the camera in front of me because I can't always see. I'm already kind of blind anyway. No, I'm just joking. Grab that there. Okay. So now here, I'm going to go ahead, throw this inside, and I'll take care of that later with the burning or whatever. And now you just continue slip stitching all the way till you get here to that second stitch, and then you'll add up. Make sure that your rows are straight. What I mean by that is see how there's a row here? If you look at them here, you could see that they're matching up. One, Two. It's kind of hard to see it, but if I put it a little bit flatter, you could see that. See, one, two, three. So, see, so you could see that they're matching up here, lining up. What I mean, you don't want it to be like uh, this is down here and your bag's not even. So, make sure that if you look at your rows, if I put them that way, there's that first row, second, third. They're all lining up nice and even. And then when you sew them, they'll be nice and even with the front as well. So these are all matching up here. And then you're gonna sew this side, finish here, fasten off, then sew the other side. Okay, you can see that I finished sewing it all, with my sides here. And so then these are the sides, the bottom, the back and the front. Then the back would just simply come over to the front like that. Now. Um, there are some little um, closures that you could stick on and it will go right through here. Um, I did, went to the store and I couldn't find any. She said that I would have to order them like online so I don't have the, um, uh, the closure to show you how it works. So I would just, you can just hold it like this and there would be no um, lining. If you want to line it, I did my lining out of that little plastic canvas mesh and I sewed it just the same like I would sew this, except I just went with a little whip stitch, first the, the sides here, then I did the, I mean the front, the back, and then the sides. Now the back, you're not gonna go all the way over because you want this to be able to um, flip over like this. So you would just sew your little pieces. I made a little templates here to cut out my pieces. So you will need two pieces, the front and the back, that will measure two and a half inches by four and a half inches here and here. 
And then you need two pieces here for the side that measures six and one quarter inch by four and a half inches. And I'll put that on the screen. And then you need the one piece down here that measures six and a quarter by two and a half inches. And then I just sewed it all together. Now you could sew this then afterwards to the purse with um, what I did is I took this cord, it's three strands, so I pulled apart the strands and I used one strand to do this. But you could also use um, a, like a quilting thread or a thicker thread. And so then what you do, if you want to, this is not required, I just kind of, it helps. You can kind of see how it's kind of a little, not real droopy, but it still holds its shape. But see how it's kind of going in. So if you want to do this, then you would just stick in your lining once it's sewn. And then you're going to just put it into place. You have to kind of stretch it out there. And just get it into your corners. To the bottom here. Get them all in there. And stretch it up here so that it's all in correctly. And then once it's in there, you're going to see that if I close this now, see how it kind of holds its shape better? It's not in all the way down here. I could feel it. But then once it's in, you could sew it to here and if it's a, I think I may maybe it's a little too long let me see here I thought I cut it the right size let's see here yeah I should be okay so then I think it might be a little too big so I can I'm gonna cut trim one little row off here I still don't have it sewn there so I'm gonna cut off a little tiny piece and you need to cut right next to the little square there because I thought this back one was going to be okay. I guess it would be easier to pull it out and then cut this piece off but I'm lazy. We're doing here on the fly here. Okay so then now you can sew your piece here onto this thread there. You could do it with this yarn and then so you would just go through the loops just like that and then hold it. Let me put it closer so you can see what I'm doing. You would just need to uh, start from one end to the other and then I'm just going through those loops. I'm not going to sew it all right now because I still have the stuff to do but I'm just trying to show you that you would sew through the little hole onto that line into this um, back of that stitching. I'm just going to show you what it would look like, just like that, and then you would sew it all the way across, all the way around, and then it would be in place. So now you would just go all the way around. You would be needing to add more yarn, and then if this one, I think this one's okay. yeah, this one's okay. Sew it across, and if you need to trim it, you can sew it all the way around, and then this the front here will be sewn just right there onto your first row of single crochet just like that so and then it would be done now I'm gonna you would also sew the sides the sides are not in all the way to the bottom so make sure you stick see now it's there on the bottom now you can see that it's gone in so make sure you got it you have it all the way squished in and if you want to if you need you can cut trim off those little edges but it's just something to give you a lining if you want it if you don't want it you don't have to have it but sometimes um, you want it so that your uh, things won't fall out and then you could hold it like this or if you want there's a lot of different kinds of handles you could um, um, uh, get like here you could then attach um, maybe do like a attach here and then go back and forth maybe uh, seven eight or nine rows of single crochet and then you could uh, loop this here and then attach and then sew your back I'll put in a link on um, one of my friend Erica she has a tutorial on when she adds this but I'm not going to add the handles because I just want a little clutch like this and then you could use it to put in makeup or whatever you want and then you could attach if you're going to attach the closures that snap in place you they will go through here and then all the way through the back 
they will snap in. So let me finish sewing this on and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's sewn on. And then it'll be ready to be used. Okay, I've sewn in the lining. And you can see what that looks like. I just went over there and used the uh, same color thread as the silver cord. Uh, cording, uh, so you can't really see it on the outside. And then this way you can just put whatever you want in there, your phone, it's not going to fall out. I intend to use this as a little clutch, so I'm not putting handles on it. Like I said, you can put different types of, uh, if you want to attach a little handle, you can. And there's also closures. This, then, you could just grab and carry it like this. And you're all set to go. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to subscribe, hit that like button. And um, I will put in a couple links uh, here for a video on my friend Erika's site. Um, uh, and she shows how to do the different closures and different straps. So anyway, have a great day. And thank you so much for sharing your day with me. Remember always that God loves you.